Hello, and today this is going to be basically a sort of rant in a way, but I wanted to talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake. So we just recently had some news regarding um, the second installment of the remake. It will be called Rebirth. It is expected to come out uh, winter of next year, which I take to mean um, the beginning of 2024, quite frankly. Um, but uh, we also got a nice teaser trailer. And of course, everyone is reacting to it. And this is, of course, um, sort of uh, lit the fires of all of those wonderful theories that we've had regarding Final Fantasy VII. And I just wanted to uh, just weigh in on what I think we can reasonably expect moving forward in the remake. Um, now, uh, I will say that this will definitely involve spoilers. So for those who are not familiar with the original story or who don't want spoilers, be warned. But the basic idea is that at the end of Remake Part 1, there was quite a deviation from the original story. And it left things open in a way that implied that moving forward, we might not know what's going to happen, that things might be done differently, that everything is... Um, it's sort of wide open from here on out. And then we had the teaser trailer for Rebirth, where at least in English, it's not quite the same in uh, Japanese, but in English, um, Aerith makes some references to, um, you know, the future being something that can be changed. And you see Zack uh, still alive with... Uh, <laughs> unconscious cloud by his side and they have made it to Midgar and all of this kind of implies for some people that things are going to be very different moving forward in uh, the remake and that Square is just going to drastically deviate from the original story so I do not agree at all I don't think that that's actually what's going to happen. I do think that Square wants us to wonder if that's what's going to happen. I think they are in certain ways suggesting that that might happen, but I don't really think that that is going to happen. And I don't think it's likely. And to me, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It makes a lot more sense to me that Square is just being Square, having fun, toying with us, but that really, as they've said many times, this remake is going to be a reasonably fairly faithful, uh, faithful remake in the sense that I really do think that all of the major important moments are still going to be here. I really don't think that it's going to be a drastic departure from what we already know from the original. So I just wanted to kind of break down why I think that I'm right, basically. So first things first, as I've mentioned, I mean, the devs have said themselves several times that they uh, intend to stick to the main story beats of the original. They've said, you know, we uh, this is still Final Fantasy VII. We're still going to have all of the iconic moments that fans know and love. You know, don't worry. Um, those will all still be there. And they've said it numerous times in numerous interviews. Numerous developers have said it. And I think that they're actually telling the truth. I think that um, they've decided to just be straightforward and honest as far as their intentions. And... Um, it is what it is. I think they really, they really mean that. Um, and they're kind of showing their hand and just letting you know, hey, we don't plan to really make any um, really significant changes, things that would significantly change what Final Fantasy VII is about. Uh, but of course, the facts that the devs say something, no, doesn't mean that it's true. But I'm just putting it out there. They have stated very clearly numerous times that they do not intend on making huge changes. Now, obviously, there are several things in Remake itself that would suggest otherwise, which is why so many people are speculating. I get it. But 
my position is that these are just red herrings. <laughs> Square is just toying with us. And this is very on brand if you think about it. So just think about the original story of Final Fantasy VII. If you're familiar with it, it is based on red herrings and false narratives. Square purposely leads us down false paths, has us believing things that are categorically untrue for large portions of the game. I mean, Final Fantasy VII itself is based on these themes of false identity and misunderstandings. And Square is a master at that. I think they did a wonderful job in the original game of um, stringing players along. And there's no reason to my mind to think that that's not exactly what they're doing here. This is just a true remake in every sense of the word. I literally think that the devs want to remake for us, recreate that experience of playing the original game. And being that a lot of us have already played the OG, I think they're being inventive and creative and finding new ways to make this experience new, even for those of us who already know the base story. Because look at where we are now. You know, those who have played the OG and those who haven't, we're kind of um, on equal ground and that none of us are a hundred percent sure where things are going. And that wouldn't be the case if they had stuck to the original story religiously, if it was literally a very close one-to-one -one adaptation with no sort of, um, surprises. We just be sitting there going, I know what's going to happen next. So I actually think this was a brilliant move on Square's part. I think they have every intention of sticking to the original story in all the ways that matter, but they just wanted to make the experience for those of us who already know the story a little more exciting. And when I think about it, I think it's extremely daring, extremely ambitious, and it kind of fills me with hope because it makes me feel like they're not just sleepwalking through this, that they're really passionate about this. After all this time, they still have a lot of passion for this project. And I think they're shooting for the stars. They don't just want to make a good remake. I think they could have perfectly done a one-to-one -one remake with no real mystery to it. And a lot of us would have been perfectly happy and it would have been wonderful. But I think they're willing to risk it and go further and give us a ride kind of recreate that experience of playing through the OG for the first time when you're not sure uh, what's going to happen, where there are moments where you're confused, where you're not understanding exactly what's real and what's not. And I literally think they're trying to kind of give us the gift of experiencing the ups and downs and the uncertainties that, you know, some of us experienced the first time time around. And I think that's brilliant. But I think that's all that, that's all this is. I don't think there are alternate timelines. I don't think that Zack survives. Aerith certainly is not going to survive. Like I said, spoiler alert. Um, no, all of those things are going to, um, all of the things that happened in the original of note are going to come to pass. They just want to take us on a little journey before we get there. Um, now, I really think there are just some basic common sense reasons why it wouldn't be in Square's best interest to try to throw huge wrenches in the original story. Now, to be clear, uh, there have been already changes, right, as of part one. But I'm talking about these core changes that, in my opinion, would fundamentally change what Final Fantasy VII is about. So what is Final Fantasy VII about? Well, it's about a lot of things, but I think definitely it is, of course, about Cloud's journey, his journey of discovery, coming to terms with his true identity, I think it also deals with the theme of loss. I don't think we know that this is a fact. The theme of loss. The fact that death is a part of life and coming to terms with that. And I think that if you mess too much with those sorts of fundamental themes, you're messing with what made Final Fantasy VII what it was. So let's talk about that because a lot of times when people say that there are going to be huge changes moving forward based on everything we've seen, often this idea of, you know, will Aerith survive? 
Is Zach alive? Those are two key questions. And to my mind, it just really wouldn't make sense to have Era survive. It wouldn't make sense ultimately to have Zach survive. Now, first of all, uh, if we talk about Zach, I just think it would be really convoluted to commit to that sort of alternate universe sort of thing where there's this alternate reality, uh, alternate timeline where Zach is alive. And so now you have these two timelines going on at the same time. And I just think it would be so convoluted. Uh, it's been done before. I don't think it's usually done well. And so Square would just be making a, um, a huge headache for themselves. They already have a huge challenge ahead of them. I'm sure it's already stressful. There's a lot to cover. Final Fantasy VII story is already very involved. And to layer on top of all of that, all the uh, locations, all the characters, all the themes, all the story points on top of all of that to try and fit in this convoluted time travel alternate timeline mess. I don't know why you would want to do that. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, so uh, just in a practical sense, I, why, <laughs> why would this really be seen as uh, something worth doing? And now we know it's been confirmed that, uh, remake is going to be a three part endeavor. So they only have three games in which to do everything they need to do. So they're going to need to be, uh, pretty careful with how they use their time. And again, uh, adding in this convoluted alternate timeline mess, I just don't think that it makes sense. Uh, alluding to it, putting it in there as a false sort of uh, herring, a red herring, okay. But actually carrying it out, mm, I don't think that would be too wise. And I'm giving Square the benefit of the doubt and assuming that they know better than to go down that very very messy route. So first of all, just from a practical point of view, convoluted. Also, when it comes to Aerith, for example, both Aerith and Zack, I think that their deaths are really important to the plot of Final Fantasy VII. I think they're really important to the themes of Final Fantasy VII. I don't think they're minor details that you want to just uh, haphazardly get rid of or change. You know, even as far as the story, there's a sort of domino effect. Zack's death really sets off the events of Final Fantasy VII. Zack's death ha plays an important role in the development of Cloud as a character. Aerith's death is very important to the plot. Aerith's death is important to uh, Sephiroth's fate right? And to um, the fact that Sephiroth was not successful in carrying out his plan. Uh, so if you change those things, you're going to have to figure out how that would change the plot. And again, there's this whole domino effect. And once again, you're just making more work for yourself, but you're also messing with that core theme of um, the fact that death is a part of life that loss is a part of life. So if we're all just going to go kumbaya and hold hands and everyone survives, we don't have that theme. And it was such, uh, you know, apparently Sakaguchi, who is no longer with Square, but at the time of Final Fantasy VII was, uh, you know, heading <clears throat> uh, Final Fantasy VII and driving the direction it went in, and apparently he had lost his mother. And so this theme of loss was something that was very relevant to him and that I think he wanted to have explored in Final Fantasy VII. And I just don't see them so casually throwing that out and throwing that away. So for me, I love comparisons. And to me, having Aerith live having Zack live would be tantamount to, let's say, uh, doing Lord of the Rings, you know, but deciding that this time around, um, spoiler alert, you know, the ring will not be destroyed. Frodo's going to keep the ring from himself and he's just going to run off and the ring is going to do its work and he's going to become Gollum part two. The end, <laughs> you know, no, that, no, the 
the ending of Lord of the Rings, the fact that the ring gets destroyed is such an important part of the story. Or to me, it would be like deciding you're going to do another Titanic movie, but this time, what if the Titanic didn't sink? What if there's no iceberg and uh, we just have a nice vacation on, on the SS Titanic? No then it's not the Titanic, is it? What is the point of telling the story? How about we do a Batman movie? I don't know, maybe they've done it in the comics, but at least in the cinematic world, how about we do a Batman movie where he doesn't lose his parents and his parents are still alive and everything's wonderful and beautiful? Well, no, because the loss of his parents is so crucial to what made Bruce Wayne Batman. Or how about Spider-Man? How about we let Uncle Ben survive? You know, these are moments that are so key to the characters' journeys and to their respective properties' essence, basically, that I think most of us could agree that it would be uh, ridiculous. And I see Aerith and Zack's uh, survival as just as ridiculous. I think suggesting that Square is going to let Aerith live is really as ridiculous as suggesting that we should make a new Titanic movie where the Titanic doesn't sink. To me, it's just as ridiculous. Like, why would anyone with any sense do that? And why would anyone with so much money <laughs> riding on things and their reputation riding on it make such a foolhardy choice? It does not make any sense to me from a business standpoint, from a practical standpoint, from a storytelling standpoint. It just, it, it, it why? That would, why? They could do it, but why would they be foolish enough to do it? And, and just to make it clear, this has nothing to do with our feelings about these characters or whether we personally want to see them go. It has to do with staying consistent with uh, what you created, um, you know, in that core sort of way. And as for Zach's death, obviously, um, it's not surprising that people are saying that Zach lives because that's what we're shown. We're literally shown, for example, in the latest teaser trailer, Zach arriving in Midgar with poor unconscious Cloud by his side, and he looks very much alive. So I get it. Um, Square is definitely leading us down that path. I'm just saying it's a red herring. And there is a theory that I heard a while ago, and ever since I've heard this theory, it stuck with me. It made sense. I went, I think that's it. So some people are guessing that Zack is indeed dead. He died back there in his altercation with all of those grunts. He never made it to Midgar. But what we're seeing is maybe some sort of, um, oh, some sort of purgatory, some sort of in-between as Zack uh, crosses into the land of the dead and he may believe himself to still be alive but he indeed is not he never made it to midgar what we're seeing is not reality and i i could see square going down that route that allows us to spend some time with zach who is definitely a beloved character i love zach he's a wonderful character and yet it doesn't impact the overall story and it also gives square the benefit of Sticking, you know, sort of sticking it to us a second time, getting our hopes up, leading us to presumably believe that Zack is alive, only to find out that, nope, he never made it. You know, I think if done well, it can be really impactful. And I think that's what, um, to, to wrap this up, I think that's what Square is going for. I think that the theme of this remake is going to be much like the major theme of the original is that, which is that, um, there are some things that you just can't avoid, that sometimes uh, we will lose loved ones, that heroes don't always make it, they don't always survive. And I think that's going to be reinforced this time around because there is the theme of fate and there is going to be that message that even if you try to avoid fate, even if you think you can do things differently, even if you think you can avoid certain things, they're unavoidable and it leads you back to your original path. And I believe that that's what's going to happen in this remake. It's leading us right back to where OG led us. But 
if done well, maybe it's going to be even more impactful. Maybe for some of us, it's going to be like losing these characters a second time. And characters in the game, uh, we're going to watch them have to learn once again that sometimes you have to let go. I really think that's what Square is going for. Whatever they're going for, I just hope that they do it well. If you do it well, you can get away with a lot. So please, Square, don't mess this up. <laughs> please. Please. <laughs>